Alright, Sean. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you very much. As you guys know, Sean. Hello, everybody. I'm Sean from Dak Band Productions. And I'm Harry Henning from Train Shop Weekly. We're here at my house, which I share with the North Penn O'Gagers. And this is what we call my old train farm, which has a lot of my collection in it. Uh, some of my cousin Walter's collection and one or two pieces of my brother's. Uh, Sean's going to show you around. You may have some questions on some things and I might be able to answer them for you. All right. You guys have fun looking around and seeing everything we got. Looking forward to this tour. As Harry mentioned, I'm doing this full tour of the old train farm, which is in the basement of his home. So right now I'm walking down the steps into <laughs> the basement to see the layout. And this is what you're going to see or what you see when you're walking down the steps. And as there is just some wonderful train memorabilia hanging on the walls, uh, some great photographs, uh, some originals, some reproduction. Uh, it's just some cool train stuff that you're already seeing uh, from his collection. Just getting down into the basement. And uh, I just love a lot of these photos. And Harry's a, a big Pennsylvania uh, fan. So if you like Pennsylvania, you're going to want to stick around. And Walt, or Walter, loves the Redding. So between uh, Walt and Bill... And Harry, they have quite a collection together on the old train farm. But uh, as we uh, walk down the steps, you can see some more cool stuff. Uh, uh, some Lionel stuff down there. And uh, uh, it's, just, it's just overwhelming. I love that uh, neon sign. And uh, you, ju just, you just, and this is just walking down the steps. You already know that this you know, you're visiting a, a huge fan of trains uh, with the memorabilia. Uh, it's just so cool to see all this. And uh, we're not done yet. So this is just getting into the basement. And right there, through that doorway is his workshop. Uh, you can see some books over there to the right. And then we're going to go ahead and pan to the left. Love that line of neon sign. Uh, that's an original Lionel Trains uh, cut out there. And then that's Harry's MPC. That's all MPC on those shelves, all Lionel MPC. That's his whole entire MPC collection. Now we're overlooking the old part, just part of the old train form layout. You can see Harry's Pennsylvania MOW work train there in the background. And we'll talk about all these structures as we go through. But right now, I just want to give everybody an overview of what they're going to see and what to expect. So if you want to see more, you're going to want to stay tuned because there's some awful stuff. And I'm pointing out the all the MPC stuff that Harry has collected over the years. And, uh, I mean, there's just years and years and years of just collecting uh, Lionel. And other name brands, Harry likes Weaver, and uh, he, he, you'll see, he mentions all that uh, later in the video. And uh, you can see the cool signs. Uh, <laughs> and uh, a bell down there, uh, horn. And now, we are, now we're finally down the steps. So there's uh, more memorabilia on the steps itself. Uh, he's got... A nice selection of reference books. He wanted me to mention he's got all the Lionel catalogs dating back from 1910 to uh, current. So we'll take a walk through the workshop here. So now we're in the, uh, the workshop area sort of like behind the scenes and even the workshop area is uh, overwhelming
So what sound system is in this, Harry? That is a, uh, it's got a chip in it. And uh, there were ones I bought off of eBay where you can put in any MP3 player. Oh. And you can record anything you want in them. A lot of my buildings are all that way. Okay. Matter of fact, that will start smoking. We just turned the smoke unit on, so I don't know how much fluids in it. it's been sitting. And this one, <laughs> that's for the pet shop. Okay. Now that's standard Lionel sound. And as you can see, we can found more lights, so we'll slowly populate town with these style Christmas lights. You can only find them around, you know, right after Christmas, because people start to get rid of Department 56 stuff. Oh, okay. They were Department 56, and then what I do is I take them apart so they're not in that battery string, and then wire them up with an LED light. Oh, okay. Are these a variety of different manufacturer buildings, or are these scratch yeah, built? They're or? all different manufacturers. Some are scratch built. Um, this one here is an old Chooch building, and then Chooch went to uh, who the heck was it? They went to after that, they they went to Berkshire Valley. Okay. Berkshire Valley. That's the drugstore. The uh, Buildings all in the back are all scratch built. Every one of them just for back scene. So they're all scratch built. And they actually got some nice detail on them, but you don't see them. I didn't know uh, Cheech even made buildings. Yeah, they made buildings years ago and then sold to Berkshire Valley. All the buildings Berkshire Valley has now were all from that. They were. They were from Chooch. Okay. And this was an MTH building modified. This was a uh, uh, an old IHC building changed around. Then uh, Woodland Scenics kit that I built. Both of these were kits. I didn't buy them pre-built. I bought them as a kit so I could paint them and do them my way. So they weren't the same as everything else. I, I can't believe the, uh, the detail, the actual... I mean, they look like real shades that are inside that building. Yep. They're printed on the glass when you get it. Oh, okay. But uh, a lot of my buildings in the back, you'll see there's curtains in a lot of them. And when we get to the other end where the other town is, uh, I'll show you some other effects that we put into some of the buildings. Okay. That uh, you don't see. But this side is pretty dirty. It hasn't been cleaned in two years. It, we just haven't got over to this side to clean it yet. It's kind of been a catch-all, per se, right now. And we just started getting back down here in the basement after two years. Well, with that's me being sick and everything, and then the COVID. And that's understandable. Uh, what building is that? That's kind of this weird. one is from TW Trainworks. It's a New Haven switch tower. Okay. And uh, that was one from, they were, they are our sponsors on Facebook, and uh, we got a few buildings from them, actually. That was one of them, and then this one here, I haven't found a place for. But, uh, I built this one all up. We did a demonstration on how to build it and so forth. But this one's a freight transfer station from uh, w, WT Train Works, or TW Train Works. They make some awesome kits. Oh, they do. And if you send them a drawing, they'll actually build a building for you. You know, they'll do it within a region. I did not know that. Yep. If you have a special building you want built or something like that, TW Trainworks will build a particular building for you, so, which is neat. This building was given to us by one of our club members. Um, that was an architect's model of the Bethlehem Station in uh, 
we are using it as our North Penn O Gager station since we let the club members, you know, run and everything here. So that's what that's been there for. So. I was uh, checking out your uh, steam locomotive collection up there too. Oh, that's a small variety of them. I know you. There's Conrail for you. Oh, I love Conrail. You know that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> These are mostly my conventional. Some of them are MTH. There's a Williams up there. Some Lionel. And then you get into the 773 and the original T1s. Only one of two of those is TMCC. Uh, and one is still conventional. Okay. So, well, I haven't converted them all over yet. Eventually I'll get enough ERR boards and put them in. And ERRs is basically TMCC or? Yeah, it's Electric Railroad. It's a TMCC upgrade. Uh, my is like this. This is a sound upgrade. The sound upgrade for it is $85. Okay. And then you get the Cruise Commander. And you buy the Cruise Commander. And you put the Cruise Commander in. That gives you the, the boards and everything for your running the train. And it'll actually take And You can get an AC Cruise Commander or a DC Cruise Commander. So if you have an old Lionel, say you want to put TMCC in a standard gauge. You can Oh, wow. So, I mean, there's a lot you can do. And all this is available at the Hennings Trains? No, those you get through uh, Third Rail. Third Rail owns uh, the ERR, Electric Railroad. It's licensed through Lionel. Okay. And uh, they all have Rail Sounds 5 boards. So you can get the Rail Sounds 5 boards for uh, steam engines. There's three different steam engines or four different steam engines diesel gas electric so if you have a small little gas electric or whatever you can put the mcc in it a lot of guys wanted to convert their mth over and put tmcc in it actually i got one here i'm working on is this the big monster cno oh wow yeah turbine. <laughs> and uh i'm in the midst of Installing the TMCC. I still got all the LC LEDs to do, ah. but got a lot of a lot of wiring on this one to do yet. Still got to finish it up. I just started on this not long ago, but I haven't had a lot of time to put in it with doing customer repairs. This is my personal one. Okay. So, probably by Christmas, I might have time to get it done. Garden New Year. That's what a lot of this is. These are my own personal projects. <laughs> it's another MTH with ERR in it. I need to fix some LEDs in this, but the MTH was gutted out and then put the uh, ERR in it for TMCC. Uh, how easy is it to do something like that? The diesels are extremely easy. Okay. And as far as doing a steam engine is a little more involved and with the steam engine you can get more involved if you're doing smoke and then I tell everybody put an electric uh, fan in fan driven smoke unit go to John Wills we sell those at the shop is a chuff generator and super chuffer and that will bring that engine pretty damn close to a legacy engine oh wow because you'll have on that with the super chuffer you'll have the rule 17 lighting which that's the dim light to bright light when you start off ditch lights on it which uh, is not common for the old TMCC you'll have your cruise control which you get from the URR boards and uh, a few other little things you can add to it as you go through and read the directions now, for the viewers out there, um, the ERR board will work off of both of a Cab 1 TMCC remote or Legacy? Absolutely. It will yeah. run off of both the TMCC Cab 1 or the Legacy remote. It's the standard 
uh, Odyssey equipment. It's basically Odyssey, TMCC Odyssey, because you got the cruise controller. Odyssey was a cruise control board, right. which is what is in all your legacy engines. It's an Odyssey board for your cruise control. Basically, when you're buying it from ERR, you're getting cruise control, so you're getting basically Odyssey equipment, which is Rail Sounds 5 and the uh, Cruise Commander. And it sounds like you can set this ERR up, like you said, in just about anything, whether it's Williams or... doesn't matter whose it is. My GG1s out there are all Williams GG1s. Um, the 2100, that yeah. has ERR in it. Okay. And, and a few other locomotives I have out on the layout uh, down the road, I'll show you, have ERR in them as well. Actually, the 475, the set engine, that I put ERR in it just for the fact that it was prior to Bluetooth for the Strasburg set. Okay. So I wanted to be able to run it on the layout in command control, so I put the MCC in it. And then up top you'll see a lot of manufacturers, boxcars, um, the O-Scale News, there's the O-Gage Model Railroad and Classic Toy Trains, and this one here is a one of one box car that was from Myron Bigger. He was the uh, owner of OGR magazine prior to Richard, and that was out of his personal collection that he gave us, along with the ERR or the uh, O Gage magazine jacket. Wow, that's nice. And uh, that was one that. Uh, Marvin gave me at York one year. Gave me that in a hat. <laughs> uh, I'll, yeah, and I'm checking out the rest of these manufacturers. I see a Maritown up there. Yep. Yeah. Uh, there's also Ross, the Ultra Line, Ross oh, yeah. Track. Yep. Uh, there are a couple different ones up there. Then all the Christmas cars. I don't even have all of them out. I have so many Christmas cars, it wasn't funny. <laughs> wow. But yeah, there's Model Railroad Magazine, which that was their 50th anniversary. They did a, an O-scale car, or an O-gauge car. The Train Museum. Uh, and then all the different years, we'd go up to Jersey High Railers when we had the uh, O-gauge uh, yeah, it was a uh, one weekend for the o OGR magazine, and then the special Strasburg car for 2019. That was when uh, we rode on the uh, 611. Yeah, we took Rich up there that time, and because uh, he had been chasing it for a while, and he said, "Well, let's go." I, I think he was about to die. He started crying. He, couldn't believe he was in the cab. <laughs> yeah, I got that same car, believe it or not. Oh yeah, they're great cars. Yeah. Somewhere up in there... Uh, hey, I just noticed you got a Warner Brothers. Well, that was, that was bought to me when I had my 70 Roadrunner. <laughs> I didn't even know that was even made. Yeah, that was a neat one. Yeah, that was my one of my new acquisitions. It's an older engine, but I have always wanted the new fucking Western. So I got it to go with my Pensy. Okay. Which, if you know any history on the Pensy, this was actually loaned from the new fucking Western in, uh, to the Pennsylvania Railroad. The same as 2119, uh, the T Reading T1, which I run on the layout. And uh, that was also on loan on so Reading. These were on loan from the N and W. Yep. And they were able to put their own name on them. Even yeah. They were their own loan. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Oh, I did not know that. Okay. The T1 they left in the Reading. They used it for the uh, up and around horseshoe curve. Oh, okay. They used it as a helper because it was extremely powerful. Well, that was the workshop right here. So that's just a tour of the workshop. <laughs> now I'm going to come out to the actual layout.
panning around. And you just can't grasp the concept of how big this is until you visit in person. I mean, it's just huge. So now we're just panning around the basement of the old train farm uh, layout because it is the whole entire basement. And I'm just blown away by all the different things uh, between... I could probably do a video on just the collection itself that he has, uh, let alone the layout update. So I'm trying to do a little bit of both here for those who may be interested in both the collection and the layout. Uh, kind of like hard to do because you can't include everything. Otherwise, this would be like a, a five-hour video. But I really like how he has everything organized. He's got it uh, labeled as to what, you know, he has, such as, uh, you know, he's got the MTH Express, Weaver, uh, Lionel. So you can see he's into different brands of trains. He doesn't stick to just one between Lionel Weaver, K-Line. He likes a, a variety of different things. Uh, Pennsylvania uh, Broadway Limited set. Then you got the Lionel PRR Trailblazer set. 18-inch passenger cars. You got the K-Line. Uh, the Jefferson set. Then over here we have the Lionel Broadway Limited. And then you got the American Freedom Train. The Chassis Special up there. Uh, it's just, oh my God, it's, it's stuff that makes you say, oh. <laughs> and then we have the MTH PRR, uh, Williams, K-Line. And uh, so, yeah, he, he buys different things. You got the K-Line, so you know, George Washington set. I mean, I don't even know how he found a lot of this stuff. A lot of stuff I've never seen before. Uh, and then um, I just love the uh, American Freedom Train. I have seen it run. I've shot video of it. He does own the other American Freedom. He owns both variations of the American Freedom locomotives. Then you got the Chessie Special. I don't think I've ever videoed that. I have to bug him one of these days to uh, run that set so I can shoot video of it. And, but I have shot video of his American Freedom train. That's like his pride and joy right there. He's even double-headed that train. So uh, you can see videos from the Run for Fun past events that I've done. And uh, once again, he's got all this so organized. I really like that SEPTA. Um, that's, that's a cool piece there. Uh, K-Line Redding, MTH. So he's got everything all labeled out. Uh, so he knows where it's all at, you know, try and keep it together. And then you get into uh, some other stuff here. And I actually copied this idea of the shelf system. He he built the shelf around the heater duct. A heater duct in the basement is usually wasted space. But he built shelves 
on both sides of it, and I actually copied the idea. Now, when you run, if you run a train at the old train farm on the old train farm layouts, his rule is you got to have a caboose, and he'll set you up with one, that's for sure. So we uh, continue the tour here. We got a couple of uh, MT8 signals, uh, Woodland, Woodland Scenic kits for buildings. Got an Atlas O a passenger station here. details uh, are so cool then we have a, uh, a Corber kit and uh, I believe this actually uh, they have it so it operates then there's an Ameritown kit back there The rest of the buildings back here are scratch built. I like this highway. And then um, here is their uh, a little uh, control station for this end of the layout for the switches. And I recognize this too as a being a Corber, oh no, this looks like it may be uh, scratch built, not Corber. Those look like a uh, Maritown front. So yeah, they've done a lot of changes because there used to be uh, a mountain here. If you look at my older Run for Fun videos, there used to be a mountain that the trains used to run through, and that's all changed. Another thing that they added uh, is a yard underneath of the layout, so they can store uh, their unit trains that are not in use. I just like all this storage under here. Shells, shells, shells. Check out all these rail boxes. Ugh, I would love to take them home. <laughs> Lots of Pennsylvania. There is a big Pennsylvania railroad fan. It's just hard to take in all this stuff because there's so much to see. So uh, we'll look at the 
trains on the top shelves and then we'll come back and start all over again with the layout sort of do a fast uh, pace through here ah lining out train day All right, so now we'll go back over here and uh, start back over again. We'll look at the layout. So what is trying to be accomplished here is that he's trying to sort of replicate the Lansdale area. Uh, so what we have here is uh, Broad Street, and then we have uh, Railroad Avenue. Going down here and then Railroad Avenue which comes into uh, I believe Broad Street so hopefully I got this right <laughs> and then the buildings here uh, are actually in the Lansdale in this particular Lansdale area yeah prior to 1972 prior to 1972 Walt says okay cool so we'll go ahead and, and look at the more details of this particular area of what Lansdale would have looked like in 19, prior to 1972. And then we have, uh, I believe that's an MTH building. So it gives you uh, an idea of what it would have looked like then. Uh, that's an Atlas O kit. And, I mean, they, these are some cool buildings and details. I like how he adds the uh, extra details to, uh, to the building kits. Uh, I believe that's the Woodland Scenics, the IGA J. Franks. That's going to be scratch built. Does this building actually still exist? None of that building exists. Okay. When we did this section, we kind of, Bill and Harry kind of did this section. This is also one of the sections that go to our show. The, the, the removable part of our modular club. Okay. This is probably one of the few pieces that are still left down here that are part of the modular club. This was a rendition of their uh, Main Street and Broad Street and Railroad Avenue back prior to 1972. Most of all this stuff was tore down to make way for what now is in the place of the Long, Long Acre building is uh, 100 uh, West Main Street, it's a six story high rise. Oh, so that whole kind of incorporation, um, just like the same with this, got tore down as part of the Madison parking lot project back in the like late 60s, early, very early 70s. By 72, when the Bar of Lansdale had their 100 year anniversary, most of all this was gone. Including this uh, passenger station? The here? passenger station, this isn't um, like the passenger station to a point. Like some of the overhang is not as far as only about two of these probably now. Okay. Uh, from the station, so it kind of, what do you call? Back in the day, there used to be a, a station line over here because there's really was, was four tracks here or three tracks. And then you had your Doylestown line that came over and behind it.
I was going to go back to what we were talking about. This is Lansdale. This is part of the Liberty Bell trolley that ran from Allentown down to Philly. Um, the only part of the, the line that's still left is what you go from Marstown is actually part of the 60, the high speed line that's in Marstown that go, takes you down to 96, 9, 69th Street Station is actually part of the original Liberty Bell Trail that went ran from um, from Allentown to to fill to fill it. Oh, okay. Came down in the Lansdale, down Main Street, turned on the Railroad Avenue. There was a trolley station over here, and then also, as you can see, down here a little farther, you see see the other line coming out. There was a loop, and there was actually a trolley station and a trolley shed in Lansdale at one time. Oh, okay. And there was actually quite a few of them along the Liberty Bell Trail. Because Bill actually has a Liberty Bell trolley at one time came in. Came, he goes, came, he goes, look quick, walk through the door at the store. So you kind of never really know what walks through the store at Henning's. Yeah. You know. That's true. You know, you'd be surprised some crazy stuff that people bring in there. But, but there, it, it, this is kind of, I mean, it's still in progress. You know, it's like the signal's kind of, what do you call, a running style. We had a double signal there. It's actually missing a a lower double target that's sideways that eventually I'm going to make and it'd be as time goes we're trying to make it kind of really look more like main street land so prior to set the seven eight six okay yeah this thing would love to do 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 the station but Lansdale station is has such or, oriental or ornamental cement work on it like around the tops and everything. And I know they're trying to get that on the register, historical register, registry, so they can't really kind of technically kind of tear it down. Okay. What I, de what I doubt Seth is going to do. Just the Doylestown line, or whatever they call it now, is one of their bigger money-making lines. But yeah, it's, it's kind of somewhat, somewhat accurate to what Lansdale kind of look like and we get a lot of things when we do them and do our show at, for Founder Day a lot of people, the older people of Lansdale remember the, the Long Acre and Bonbucker building, Beinhecker building okay you know so but that is what this is trying to be kind of mimic you know taking pictures and kind of what do you call them you know but yeah this is our kind of our land our, Lansdale kind of thing. Now eventually, eventually a lot of the, the switched house down there will get, get switched out to a real, actual, more modern, modern replica of the original uh, switch tile that was in Lansdale. All right. You know, I slowly over the years have gathered parts and pieces to to make it. <coughs> so that's that's kind of cool because you got. You, you're basically preserving history as well. Yeah, I mean, in it's your, in your not, modeling. Yeah, not everything's exact, but eventually, that's this area that's going to be. You know, most of these buildings were gone before we were kids. I remember, don't vaguely remember them as a child, like kindergarten. That being when they were tearing it down, or when that was already gone, they were building the the 100. Uh, West Main Street. All right. Wow. Oh. And everything, you know. Just some of the things you've seen changed over the years in Mansell. I, I remember this layout. Like you said, you brought this to a lot. This goes to almost all our shows. This Okay, this one. So you guys actually rip this thing out of the basement and yep. drag it up them steps. Yep, use along with, <laughs> along with the bridge. I mean, a lot of people, have you ever been to... Oaks, we've yeah, been to quite a few. Um, uh, where else? Uh, we've been to Wilmington with our, our club. We're trying <laughs> right. to get up into Allentown. <laughs> Feeling any better? You know. All right. I just can't imagine tearing oh, this. Oh, it's in sections. Okay. Conrail. Yep. Did somebody say Conrail? <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
But yeah, it's 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 three sections. It's two eight footers and a four footer. Well, that makes it a little bit easier. Yeah. Well, in, in the club thing, you either everything has to be done in two foot increments. Really, basically four foot, eight foot, or if you're gonna do like an odd one, a two foot or a six foot, you got to make two of them. Okay. At all. Yeah. But I mean, at one time, this whole row went. We used to take the bridge out, but it just gets too big. Mm -hmm. Harry's tossed around that. It's getting old. And yeah, let's take a look at the bridge. I mean, we're already heading down this way. And I remember uh, shooting video of this bridge. And, and he's done some a little bit more updating detail to it. And now it's got some, I don't mind the mess, but he's still working on it. He's got, got the ship down there now. Oh, he's, yeah. He's, he's redone the water. Wow. No, he's not finished. He got sidetracked it on another project we'll get to in a little bit. But, um, yeah, basically there, I mean, this is all, this used to come out of the basement, but it just got too, it, it takes like six guys to get this out of the basement. Oh, I can imagine. Uh, you know, this thing looks, you know, looks we, heavy. We <laughs> used to took it, I mean, because we took it, I mean, at one time our, our, our club actually was down at the art museum in our very early days. That was kind of cool. And this was kind of the showpiece. Look at that nice red ink. Yeah, I wonder whose collection this is. I wonder who. <laughs> I want to know. Not all of it's the same. There's two people's collection up there. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, the first three sh the three bottom shelves are mine, and the top shelf's another one of our members, uh, Jason. Okay. And these are kind of my lanterns up there. But one of the, I have to say, one of the coolest things, I don't know how much I'd have to say. Out of my collection. Oh yeah, you need it now. Tell them where that's from. Yeah, this is probably my coolest thing I got out of my collection. I don't mind a little dusty. Part of like, the old train farm collection with me and Walt. I bought this online off of some guy. Well, the story goes, his dad worked for yeah. Bud Company. One of his friends worked for the Reading. When they were changing over the announcement, or the PA system in Reading Terminal, that came out of Reading Terminal. That is supposedly a microphone from Reading Terminal. Wow. That's the story I got. I can have no paperwork to claim it. But that's the story I'll tell. So, uh, you know, does it have any Reading marking? Uh, no reason why the guy would would lie to me. Yeah. He was. He said, "I'm just not a Reading fan. I'm a PRR guy." And he had all kinds of PRR stuff. You know, he had the little, the little, um, uh, in his basement, he had, um, what the heck did he have set up? The, um, uh, like, uh, station office. With, oh. With, with the phone that came, that had, was on the kind of the springy thing. So it's like, <laughs> so it's not like the guy, I don't think the guy, this came from my dad. What do you call it? He told me the story. Yeah. I asked a friend who, who works on them if it was fixable, if it worked. He, he kind of pulled the bottom apart and said, no, nah, it's broken. He goes, I'm going to touch it and leave it the way it is. So, but that's my flame of history. Wow, that's pretty neat. You know, it's kind of, kind of a cool <laughs> talking piece. But, that's for sure. Yeah. And this is your train that you're on yes. right now. Oh, these are my MTH um, U-boats. Uh, two powers and dominance. And the other one's Jason's uh, engine, dummy. But I think that's one of the few clutches I have of all MTH U-boats. Those look like MTH signals. No, I think they're Lionel's. They're Lionel's? Yeah. These are probably a mix of Lionel and what do you call it? Oh, here comes Harry with a steam engine. Uh-oh. Check this out.
going to get some major changes at some point because we have to raise this bridge and the big bridge up about a quarter inch so we can run the more modern end because the MTH uh, auto racks do not fit under the bridge. Oh. And I think some of the high stacks don't fit under the bridge. So, and people, when we do our run for fun, people bring the modern. We want to be able to kind of run. But this is probably going to be the next big project is redoing redoing this this area in here. And it's one probably one of the older sections. That's oh. how I would say. You know, and everybody see our big old scale tree. Yes. That's a scale, I believe, a 50 or 60 foot scale tree. <laughs> and that thing looks pretty huge next to a real, you know, no I mean, but, but it, it's actually, we were talking one night, I said I thought we were talking, we were playing about scale stuff and scale trees, and came back like the following week, huh, ah, how do you like my scale tree? <laughs> so you want to look at a real 50 foot scale tree, that's what it probably about a a 50 or 60 foot scale tree look, would look like. Wow. No scale like that. How long did it take you to put that together? I, you have to ask him. Probably about an hour. Knowing Harry. <laughs> Mad man that he is. Yeah. Uh, and all. But, I mean, you know, a lot of people, this hasn't changed very much, but this is going to be one of our next um, probably changes. Uh, unfortunately, that quarter inch makes a uh, world of difference. Oh, that it does, especially if you're running, running, like you said, more modern trains. trains. You know. Do you know the brand name of the buildings, or are these all scratch built? Uh, I think most of them are scratch built. I think some of them. These are all mostly scratch built up here, right? Yeah. I know. I know the gas station's a kit. Um, gas station's Lionel. Lionel kit. Yeah, a lot of them are. Oh, wow. Well, I'll keep yeah, that. Cause, yeah, because I know he made that. The curved one, he, he melted that. I don't know what do you call it. That's the MTH fire station. There's a couple MTH buildings in here. That looks like the Atlas. Or, uh, Atlas or Walter's uh, movie theater back there. So... And I think this is a, a wood kit. One of his customers, one of his, one of his friends uh, slash customers built. Oh, okay. He was a, a two rail O gauge guy. Yeah, most of them. Now I, I was telling you about inside windows. Yes. See the windows. Yes. Now let's let's turn the lights off. Look at the silhouettes in the windows. Oh. Ho, ho. You might want to try to zoom in on those. That's something you don't see. They're having a real good party in there. Right? Yeah, I guess so. Wow. <laughs> That's just crazy. Well, you don't know how mad Harry is. I mean, even using a Zoom, which I... I got pretty good zoom on this camcorder. I'm actually zooming in on that uh, building, the angled building, pretty good. And you can actually see uh, details inside there now. And like you said, the, the curtains. All stuff that uh, I wouldn't think of the, the fine, that fine detailing that Harry does. Yeah. Oh, that's. Well, I said this is coming out pretty good. So. I mean, even even the scout guys over there working on the scaffolding that he made. Trying to get it across. There we go. Just looking inside these buildings, I mean, it's just so cool.
even the uh, the street lights. Oh yeah, the lighting he has done when, when you turn the lights down. I can't imagine what it's going to be like to raise this up just that little bit. <laughs> That's going to be a project and a half. And we'll do some changes. Uh, is this bridge scratch built? Uh, yes, it's extended. <coughs> it's an Atlas bridge, but it's been extended. It's the Atlas uh, with the 40 inch, inch uh, platinum truss bridge. Okay. I think he cocked it and extended it. Alright, so I'm looking at this area. I noticed that gray building is long gone that used to be here. Yeah, so this, this, is, this is probably our next major, what we're doing. Um, we put the uh, Millhouse. Millhouse <laughs> River Studios. Millhouse River Studios tr transfer table in. And we got it in bonkers. And then, yeah, then we kind of went, Harry got the crazy notion, must have woke up and had a dream of building a, a newer uh, engine house. Cause, I wanted something to fit the time. Yeah. The concrete one really wasn't fitting the error that we did. Kind of we went after more of something that mimics somewhat the Redding, Redding, original Redding shops okay. in, the, in the shape. Um, you can see some of the mad things that Harry has done. We were making this that this can come off. There's all the end, uh, some of the machine shop stuff that I've been collecting over the years. Um, it's, yeah, the building's uh, not set down in place. Yes, yet. it's not finished. Um, it's got to have some arcing and some um, lights and everything still. It's going to be all lit up. Um, and everything. So this this is kind of gone on the wall. Can be taken off, and put up. We haven't decided if we're going to make it where it flips down or flips up yet. That's still in the in the kind of in the workings. Um, uh, one of the things you can see that back there is the cradle or the crane. That's that going to be TMCC. That's going to be a TMCC that we kind of kit bash from another thing. Um, this is what it's going to be that when the kids come here, they're going to be able to push a button, it's going to make all the sounds. It's going to be a simulation of it being the body being pulled off, off the wheels, and go up and come back down. We thought about, we talked about making it, picking up and moving it, it's like that's getting a little bit complicated right now, maybe down the road we'll make it and do that, but it's just a little bit of animation that we're going to give so the kids it's like layout, there's all different spots that you can push buttons and, and see things work. So, this is Harry at his madness again. So, and that's so cool. And uh, he was telling me how he's painting all these bricks by hand. Yeah, I can't imagine that. Such a very patient man. Yeah, I wouldn't have enough patience for that. That's for sure. I don't know if you know, you know of the one Debbie who's in our group. She did the barn that what do you call it? She did the bottom half of a, a house, the stone foundation, and she's like, oh, I don't know how he does all that brick. So, but it, it's all out of it's about patience. And uh, you know, I like the how he makes his own detailed loads like this, and. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming this is with evergreen plastics? No, this is uh, not evergreen. Evergreen does make some I beams. You can get them from them. Plastic These are plastic struck. Plastic struck, okay. And that's the beams. And you, you got to remember to write in the little lettering and poundage and stuff like that. I mean, that. once you add the chain and the rust and the lettering, that car looks so realistic. Uh, actually, that's, that is what you call really detailed. If you ever built in construction and built steel buildings, or even worked in a steel building. They all got that white chalk or number painted on there of where it goes. You know, it's like a big giant puzzle. I worked in the steel company for quite a while. Oh. Yeah. 
Okay. I worked for a steel processing plant, and uh, I had some odd jobs there, and I got to learn a lot about steel. I also got to play with the trains. <laughs> they had an old SW uh, 1500 that used to haul in the gondolas to empty the gondolas and flat cars. It was a lot of fun. And uh, let's look at this. Uh, I want to look at this uh, tank facility you got, the storage tank facility you got here. Because yeah, that, that, that's the part, this is all the, di the sides of the diesel. And you got back there, so there's our work train, the fancy work train. Then we got the uh, car facility, the work trains in between, and the uh, steam facility. So it goes steam, work train, uh, car shops, and then diesel shop one and diesel shop two. Wow. It's like a full blown facility just in this this section of the layout. Come, come work come and work for the riding there? <laughs> work on real trains. <laughs> yeah. And everything, it, it'll all be illuminated and everything, so. That is a cool idea with the, uh, the diesel station. So you got the, you got the uh, truck coming in to fill up the tanks and to refuel the uh, locomotives, basically. So, so try, try to make everything that a diesel railroad would have in, in so many words. And, uh, what about this uh, Reading Switch Tower? Is that something that... Um, I think that's... That is some kind of kit. Now your diesel locomotive shop number one that he just mentioned. That is um, Trainworks. TW Trainworks. Yep. And does transfer tables also buy them as well? No, the transfer tables um No House? Yeah, no house. Okay, so you got a mill house turn transfer table, table. And turn table. Right. And we'll get to that here in a minute, the mill house turntable. But you know, this is that's just a cool building and uh, I like the way you guys uh, hit the controls if you could show her yeah what do you call this way we kind of did a thing where we're gonna have people rail fan in here eventually and then you just pop this off there's your controls and there you that's your controls for your uh, transfer table transfer table and I can't wait to get for you guys to get that done and shoot a video of that in operation yeah we had it in operation but doing moving around and it's like just with everything with COVID and yeah, we're not here as much. Yeah, we'll wait. We can wait. Yeah. Okay, it's just like we keep wanting to try to do the run for fun this year. It just didn't, just didn't happen. I mean, hopefully this coming summer it will happen again. You know, we'll get some stuff done. But it's... You now that's kind of Pensy World over there. And this is Redding World. Well, let's go from Redding to Pensy, then. And uh, I, I just like how you did this... The interior of this. Yeah, don't, yeah, try to be able to get a little bit of a lighting effect. There's no. Usually that's got some engines. I think that I, I think the picture of it won one contest one time. We had all the engines in there. I mean, it looks like a, a real engine house inside there. The way you guys got that all. It's so cool. And then right next door to it, while you got the lights off, I wanted to show the uh, the car shop, right? This is the car mm -hmm. shop? Yeah, you can take this. Kind of make the removable door so you can't... Oops. That's pretty neat. I like that. And this is where they would have done uh, car maintenance, right? Yep. This is a TW train works as well? No, this is, um, I want to say, not AHM. Who the heck was it? 
this is a standard straight rain it roundhouse kit. I want to say AHM did it, then somebody else owned it. But it's an older kit. Okay. Same because they did them in H. I think it's a, it used originally was an AH AHM kit because they had the same kit in H out. Oh, all right. I just like I like how he adds all these lights. I, I mean, that's got to take time and patience too. Maybe I'll develop patience one of these days. <laughs> and as we're moving around, you can you can see all the storage of multiple shells of just O gauge train cars. I love that wirehouse wirehouser. That's cool. And uh here we have uh, Lionel scale 86 foot box cars and the Lionel scale 89 foot auto racks, uh, Atlas O 89 foot scale flat cars. So I do recognize all this stuff as I have most of what you're seeing here, with the exception of the Atlas O flat cars. I would love to find them. Yeah, I mean, it just shows you, like, a lot of people, uh, it's not an uncommon thing to do is round your layout for car storage, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Very, very simple shelves to make. Um, some, if you got a table saw, whoops, there goes my spectacles. Um, now, a lot, some, some of them have the grooves cut in, some of them don't, to make it so the, the cars kind of more stay in, stay in there, you know? You look at this, it has just a saw blade ripped down through it and the wheels, the flange will sit in cinnamon. How high does this layout sit? 40, well, roughly around 40 inches. It's basically the same height as the club layout when we go out. 40 inches right about. Uh, right. Usually when people ask how big this layout is, I say it's the whole basement of the house, but do uh, you have any? 28 by 55 roughly. The basement is something I think it's like 28 by 55. 28 by 55. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep going around here. I, I like this how he did this uh, outside of the car shop. Oh, uh, yeah, it's got some guys that, uh, that does have, I don't know, usually has a guy welding. Yeah, I remember shooting video before mm -hmm. here, and normally for the run for fun we'll have that working where the guys are actually welding, and there's an actual blue LED light that flickers. So. And then we had the, the hoist there on the, for the uh, uh, car trucks it looks like. There. Yeah, this is a scratch build, plus a plastic truck. These are um, the Plasticville um, signal tower legs. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you guys, uh, we use a... Uh... Yes, a lot of what do you call Because oh, when he built the original, built the original uh, signal tower over the tower, over there, that's what that was. Uh, a bunch of plas Plasticville. But he is in the midst of putting a new one in. Okay. Yeah. And it did just like a lot of, lot of little things, like the, the overhead hoist, the swing hoist over there. Um, I believe that the, all the leg is part of some bridge. You know, constantly using something. This, the, um, so you recycle a lot of parts. Yes, yes. I mean, there again, I believe that over there is the same thing. That hoist over there is over there by the engine shop. Yeah. Then you have that engine building over there with the um, doors that open up, and that's that comes out of a guy from Turkey. That building's from Turkey. Really? Yes. Um, Bachman sells a lot of his stuff. Like he he has quite a few products. Um, like he does a, um, I don't know, is it a, a ballast spreader. Um, Bachman 
uh, sells them. You can get them through Walter, some of his stuff. But um, he is one of our sponsors now and then. You'll see him on, what do you call it? But it's a really cool. I mean, I said, said to Harry, I said, I would talk to him about just making the doors, the roll up doors. So you can add that to any building you'd like. Oh, that would be cool. You know, like a, a door kit. You know? Yeah, I like that. You know? It's pretty simple. It's, it's, it's kind of like a big kind of square box with a little motor. And, you know, hey, you can put that in just about any type of building. Yeah. Now, over here to the right, is that your MOW yard? Or yep. For your, for your MOW trains? Yep. Got Harry's work train. Uh, quite a few of them cars are scratch built. He got his book out and, you know, takes the book and a lot, of, a lot of research to what the cars look like and everything and what was part of the Pennsylvania work train. I remember shooting video of him running this train once. Yeah, because I think the, the, the one crane in the back is the TMCC crane. Yes. Somewhere along the line, I, mean, I, I have a video of us playing with the crane of actually picking up a car and trying to put a car back on the track around <laughs> ram at one time. Because it's funny, the one hook, the one hook will, go, will hit the floor if you run off the side of the layout. Don't, and then uh, there's that much string in the hook. Oh, okay. The single hook. I think the front hook. Because two of the hooks go up and down. So what is this guy in the green suit doing over there by that building? <laughs> i got to ask. He's doing a hazmat. Oh, a hazmat? That's a hazmat guy. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not good. You know, you got to throw some, some funny things in there. Yeah. Which brings us to this cool Millhouse Studios roundhouse, which I shot video uh, when you guys were trying to host your uh, last open house. That we, had a, that we had an electrical problem? That you guys were having electrical problems, but I decided to concentrate on this area because this was one of the areas that was working, and Harry just happened to be running locomotives inside of it, and that video, basically, uh, at this point in time, is up to almost 60,000 views. So <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of the electrical problem. It was somewhat my fault, a little bit of Harry's. <laughs> <laughs> but... How, I know you guys worked on this for quite some time. Yes, it was um because that was we 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 what do you call we basically tore out this entire section, roughly a span of roughly twelve, a little under twelve feet lot wide. This is okay. Um, it's like eleven and some change, I think. And that we made it when um, we were what do you call? I built it so it was a big open space. And it's built out of two by fours. Some people don't like two by fours. I'm kind of, because I'm a contractor and that's what I work with, the strength. We wanted to be able to walk on it yes. and get to it. A lot of people sit there and about talking about walking on the track. We can walk on the track. It's Atlas track. It's not like guard graves or something that's going to squish. Because um, when we first started getting into, when we were doing our layout, Atlas track was very cheap, very reasonable. It's the nicest looking stuff, the most realistic looking stuff, but now it's the most expensive stuff. Yes. Yeah. And everything. Now this also, uh, the roundhouse has also got a keypad control as well, correct? Um, now this, this, this is all the roundhouse. This is all the, oh. there's all the switches to power up these sections. Yeah, but I think he's got a keypad inside yeah, here. Yeah, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, yes. That's the keypad for the turntable. There you go. So every, everything's a little bit hidden. And then we got the paint shop. Is that what that is? Is the red paint shop? And, uh, who? Yeah. Nice being here.
and then uh, it comes back around up this uh, um, incline up to the city we were just looking at. That's the hill town. Hill town. Hill top. Hill top. No. How much of a grade is this? Basically, that's going to travel through this tunnel behind the uh, coaling station there. And that's a new, little bit new added up there, the hobo shack. And we got the hobo. That was in the hobo village. Is uh, they were Brian's, and that was done for Brian. But uh, if you listen, it plays the music. Oh, okay. And basically it comes through the town that we were just looking at, Pilltop, as they mentioned. And there's Harry, who's running it. So we'll come back, pan around, and uh, we'll take a look. continue our tour with the roundhouse. The roundhouse is kind of all scratch built. So that's an actual paint shop, as Harry mentioned. Really, really nice. There's quite a few buildings. Yeah, I remember seeing them. Yeah. Maybe you get down and you got to you can zoom yourself in and into the roundhouse and you can see the detail in there. Actually, it was on the other side. There's holes down the roof. Tower over there, scratch built. Okay. So that's scratch built. Is that after a, a realistic tower or right. something like this? Some, some type of realistic tower where we got out of a book. Okay. Now, it's like he might have posted, I'm sure he posted pictures at some point in time about it or how he built it. Like most of his buildings he does. I like how all these steam locomotives are lined up and Round the roundhouse here. Very cool. You got a guy that's looks like he's uh, starting to scrub one off. Some other guys here. I guess we're getting ready to do some maintenance. No, he's, he's one for detail. That is really nice. So, if you want to see this roundhouse in action, uh, you can see that video on Dakman Productions. I'll put a link to it in the video. Uh, it's it's a very cool piece, and you can actually see steam locomotives running into it. Yeah, they've been out of touch. I haven't been down here playing a lot. You even got a couple box. Are they box cab electrics? Back? Yep. Yeah. And then uh, one of the things I was uh, eyeing up is uh, this is a lot of the M. M uh, yeah, MPC era cars. Yeah, the Harry's Lionel MPC era collection. I mean, this this is pretty big. Uh, he's got a big, huge collection of MPC. That's for sure. And this is only part of it. <laughs> Believe it or not, I just can't imagine. 
some cool pieces in there down the scene. Uh, That's for sure. Years of yeah, years of collecting it. And then we have uh, we continue on here, and then we travel over here uh, to what's the, the coal yard, correct? Yep, yep, the coal mine. Now yep. this has had a couple changes over. Yes, we when uh, John Will, a lot of people might know him, Gunrunner John, when Lionel came out with the big boy, we had to tear the tunnel out because the big boy would take out. If there was another train or the ass end of the train, it would take the train out because of the boiler overhang. Oh. So we actually, up there has, I believe, 80 and 72, or maybe 90, 90 and 81, 81 radius. Okay. So a bigger radius in there, spread it apart a little bit more. Um, keep that, when we did that, we added. This also has some animation to it. Now, so it's still still kind of work in progress. We got a bunch of projects a little bit here and there. Yeah, it's definitely a major change in this section. Because I think I remember it used to be in like a big hill yeah, here. Yeah, it's kind of more like this mountain. A lot of the rocks are mold rocks. Some of them are ones I made. Some of them are uh, wooden scenics. But uh, that's kind of my thing. I like to like more. I'm more of a scenic guy. Is that building scratch built? Yes. Okay. Because I don't recognize it, so I kind of figured as much. Mm -hmm. I think it went through a couple of changes. Oh, all right. And, all right and I, I'm, I'm looking up top there. And I see uh, some mining equipment, including some looks, look, looks like little small mining trains up there. Yep. Is that HO? I believe they are. Harry's already told us about the hobo camp. So what about this structure right here? That is scratch built that he took out of a book. He did do a video, believe it or not, that is a bucket and a funnel. Oh! This is a bucket. This is right here. This is a bucket. Okay. And that's a funnel. Which, um, but this is, um, Masking tape, two inch masking tape to give it that painted concrete, to give it that, that step concrete look. Yes. So, but yes, that's a bucket and a funnel. <laughs> that is so neat. And the Pennsylvania actually has this? I believe so. Somewhere along the line. So each one of these uh, switches here? Each one, each one of them is for whatever spur. Okay. So, for, so you so can power the spurs off and yep. on as you need them. Yep. So everything stays dead. So it kind of starts there with one and goes clockwise to 27. So there's 27 spurs. Wow, 27 spurs. And what's this control panel over here for? That is for the switching of the yard. The yards, we used to have a much bigger one. And we kind of, that's for coming in the, this is for over on the other side behind the roundhouse. Oh, okay. These are switching on to the main, going on to the main line. Um, this is your up, and this is your coming down. This is over here in front of the, uh, uh, another way to get into the yard. And this is for the freight, over here at the freight yard. And then this is a major, this is another kill switch. Oh, okay. So you can kill the power all together. Yeah. There's a couple of kill switches around here. That's a good idea. Yeah. There is all where all everything comes together. Oh wow. The wiring, the TUI, and that's it. 
Yeah, the TUI for the, the MTH. But yeah, that's all my fun stuff down there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's sort of it's sort of like the interior of your house. The, the part that takes a lot of things that keeps everything going that you never see. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Then you yep. have your line yep. of bricks. Yep, there's our bricks. We have six bricks that run the run the layout. One's kind of really doesn't get used. You got four. The first two are for the main. Then we have one for the yard and one kind of for the accessories. Oh wow! So actually, there's probably about there's six here. There's another two. And there's a ZW. So there's about eight bricks and two other power packs that run the layout. Wow. You got a lot of power. So you must have this layout in zones then? Yes, there's four zones on the main line. Okay. And there's a zone for the yard and the engine facility. Um, and there's a zone over in the back under the town for the freight passenger yard kind of is. That's a whole zone. Um, there's a zone for the under underneath layout, and there's like two zones over there, one for the, the, the passenger yard and one for the other side, um, like where the station is and that, that kind of industrial yard. For those who are watching this, what do you recommend as far as power drops? I see this question quite often. I mean, is it up to, you know, once you get to a certain size layout, you should put in... You know, um, it's usually about like every depending on what kind of track you're using and what you do. MTA okay, you look gotta look at it two different ways. MTH system's not going away. It's, Atlas is keeping it alive. Right. Thank God. And then probably everybody <laughs> everybody's probably happy. I'm happy. I love I love the MTH. Um, MTH likes a spider wire. Right. Okay, you go into if you saw it underneath there, they have they have their brick ports or a manifold where you can either do 12 or 24 run to hit home runs out of it. Come off the TUI, go in there, and also you can go to because Lionel has one wire and you know, I kind of what do you call Lionel system? You know, I had to look back. It's hard for me to say. It's, Lionel does have a, probably a superior system in. Reliability of the engines responding to it. You know, they do it into their sets, their HO sets. One wire, none of this reverse loops or all that stuff. With Larky, they can do an HO and everything. One wire and away you go, and it's kind of very, very reliable. DCs, DCCs kind of can be iffy, it's got, got its gremlins, everybody knows MTH has its gremlins, I mean, every now and then, Legacy has its gremlins too. Oh yeah. So, but that one wire, and it's what do you call it, it's a shame that, like I like the functions of MTH, I like to talk, I much more talk to it, I think the controller is much more simpler to use. I would consider user friendly. Um, thumb wheel ain't the best. Lionel has that nice, what do you call it? Yeah. And I think, I believe it or not, from what I've gathered and information, Neil Young, he's one of the guys who, if you ever have a chance, look that up when you ever see that, the one with Neil Young on it about his train, his son, that's Sarah Palsy. That's, I believe, where the big red dot, the big circle came from. Oh, okay. So his son liked the trains. It was one way to get his trains to run the trains. It's in the video. It's out there on YouTube. Um, very interesting one to watch. Um, but yeah, you go for drops. It's still a rule of thumb. Every eight to ten sections. It really is. That's the best way to get. Make sure you have a good signal and power source. All right. That's how. That's pretty much how it is here. Um, when I do the spider wiring, I kind of did like a three zone to get every home run because you get to, um, it'll get too much wiring. But it's it's been rewired. Um, 
So we still have the bus wire that we originally started. We just started a bus wire that I came along with the MTH. I'm the big MTH pusher. I don't have all the answers for MTH, but I have some. <laughs> and if I get you a video call, I would say referring you to Gunrunner John. Because um, he is the guru, uh, a guru of electronics. But um, there's some of the signaling systems in here are uh, John Will Associates um, stuff. Um, uh, his signaling product, uh, some of his products are in here. Some of the, the um, but most a lot of the signaling stuff is, is his. Um, but yes. And it looks like we got even more MPC stuff up here. Oh yeah. He uh, ended up copying his shelf idea off the rafters. I think one of my first or second visit here, I seen that where he actually built it around it, the the shelving around the heater box or the heater. Uh, yeah, very very yeah. Uh, hide it. The, to hide it, and I I did that exact same thing. And it, and it's perfect for uh, putting trains. I I really like that idea. You know? What's with that building that's up on top that of the That is show? the Lion L building. Oh. Because the original actually had to re redo it because the original board or whatever you put underneath that it kind of... So Lion L made this building? Uh, yeah, I believe it's a Lion L kit. Oh, a kit. Mm -hmm. Suppose I guess that's the original Lion L building from wherever Lion L was. Oh, okay. Like the first building, the yes. first factory. Yes. Some simulation of the first factory. So do you have any other future plans? Biggest future plan plans is going to be raising raising this bridge up. Okay. Roughly a quarter this whole area up a quarter inch. Just so we get just high, a little bit higher than what we have to have for the the high stacks and the auto racks to get underneath it. Okay. So when we have a run for fun and people want to run a modern train, because I I'm actually been, I think I have about 20 plus auto racks now. But oh, you have the MTH versions, correct? I have MTH, I have Atlas, and I have a couple of uh, Line L. Oh, okay. I was kind of what do you call it? I didn't jump on some of the Line L ones that came out that. Met the 376 date that I could throw in on. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Last of my running trains. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to say that. I need to come back and haunt me, Sean. <laughs> yeah, I think this is this is one of the latest. I think that came out the B unit. had the run for fun, I'm sure people are going to ask this, is the general public invited or just people, certain people or? Uh, that, uh, when we do the run for fun, general public. Okay, so the general people, general public is allowed to visit during yep, the run, they for run for fun. Okay. And I mean, our, our future plans is eventually we'll, we'll build the addition, the shop will get the addition built, well, there'll be a second floor on there, that's the game plan, and then this this will move all to there, and then it'll be more of a an open, more of an open type thing. Wow, that's a heck of a goal. Yes, that's 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 the, the original where people can sort of almost like the Jersey High Railers do. Yes, a, a more of a, a monthly kind or several times a year open at open house kind of run for fun. Wow, so that that I mean that's going to take some time to do. You know, I would say. Well, once, once we kind of get that place, you, you know. Hopefully the pandemic be gone, everything will be back to normal. And For now, after Christmas and New Year, it'll be an invitational type thing for a while. Okay. So we don't have a, we're not 
flooded with people. Right. But we have visitors that can come and visit us. Okay. So that that is what we plan on doing in the long run. Long so things stay. If everything stays, then we'll have the regular run for fun. Hopefully this. Oh, hopefully this. This kind of summer this year. Yeah, fall. Like we have in the past. Yeah. Oh, that's just cool. the whole thing with COVID. Yeah. Yeah. There's I, a lot of people paranoid, and you know, I, I get it. You know. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Well, Harry, you got one huge collection. That's for sure between you. We didn't even Walt. see all of them. <laughs> Maybe we got to the other building. You want to take a little peek on the showcases out there? Sure, why not? Let's right. let's take a look at the uh, other building. So we're in the barn of the old train farm, and we're looking at some cool pieces. And uh, so, what have we got here on the top shelf, there, Harry? That is a, a 1930s, 1935. That is the uh, Union Pacific Streamliner. Then behind it's the red. Uh, streamliner from Lionel. That was the Road 27 set. Okay. And behind that is a Marks Union Pacific. A Marks? Wow. Yeah, it's a Marks set, which I think is neat with all the lithograph on it. Now, was that a, a, an electric unit? It's or? electric. Oh, wow. Not ball. But, uh, then the other one's a Silver Streak uh, Union Pacific set. Okay. And then below that's the Santa Fe that has the open frame motors in it. They were the first year Lionel made the F7s. They were what we call the growler motors. Oh, okay. When they run, they growl. Yeah. And they, they're geared down a little more than the following year went a lot faster. But these things could pull. And uh, they had the aluminum passenger cars. The B units were made the following year after the F units. So originally they didn't come with a B unit, it would have been an A and an A unit. Okay. And then the following year you could buy the B unit the B as unit. an add-on. And uh, you were mentioning that these had electric couplers? Yeah, they have an electric coupler on it. The 224 set has an electric coupler. And these have a very odd, not one that most people would recognize. There's a fiberboard. Oh, wow. And that's the first year they did electric couplers. I did not know that. See, yeah. a history lesson. Uh, that's why That's why this set's kept together because it's all original. Very nice. Then below, in the top shelf on the showcase, that is a MTH presidential set. That was given to me by a very close friend, one of my school teachers as a kid. And when he passed away, he left that to me. And this is a replica of the American Flyer set? Yes, it's a replica of the American Flyer set. And then the rest down are my post-war and pre-war, or I should say post-war stuff and my MPC items. Now. I'm noticing the uh, Preamble Express because I actually have one myself, but I've never seen a B unit before. Yeah, they made the B unit and it was like the following year after as well on that, and the paint doesn't match. Okay. <laughs> You'll notice it's the engines are glossy and the B unit is dull coat. Basically, it must be pretty rare because I've never seen one until now. Yeah, it's like a, we've had a few of them in the shop. Then the Amtrak uh, Metro liners, they're from Elliott Wentz. Okay, I have a couple of those sets. And then I'm noticing uh, what looks to be FM Train Masters. Yep, most of those are uh, everything to the right is MPC, and then from the 2341. Post war. All right, and um, there, there was, I guess you were mentioning before there was a problem where yeah the die cast 
uh, trucks on those and the GG1s have been blowing up on them. So there's been, something that you got to keep an eye on down the road. Uh, so they're suffering from zinc rot. Zinc rot, yes. Okay. And then the general sets, There's most people don't know there's two different versions of the general from the 50s. One has a gray stack, one has a black stack. The black stack also has a gold band on it where the gray one's dug. Oh, wow. They also make one of the baggage cars with a whistle in it. That oh, for that set. That is neat. And uh, how about that Amtrak Genesis it looks like down there? That one there is actually a Williams. Wow, I didn't know that. And I TMCC'd that for in the house, but we used it for the show for our train shop weekly. Okay. It just hasn't made it back in the house. <laughs> and look at the cool trolleys you got down there. I love the trolleys. Yeah, the trolleys are awesome. I like the Coca-Cola one. That was one of my favorites for Christmas. Are these all trolleys that actually run on, on electric or? They're, most of them are either uh, Lionel. There's Lionel ones there. There's Bowser. There's MTH. And actually the Coca-Cola was a K-Line. So it's a little bit of everybody's, but they're all, they will all run. And then the railroad hats were from uh, one of our customers. He worked for the Pennsylvania Railroad, then he went to Penn Central, then to Conrail, and then from Conrail he went over to Jersey Transit. Wow. So he left me a lot of his hats, the pins, and so forth, which I thought were awesome. Plus all his books, which you can see. I can see you drooling over that Conrail book. <laughs> yeah, there's a couple Conrail books there. Yep. Yeah. That's so cool, though. And then I got some SEPTA patches from the local. That's where all these signs are local SEPTA signs. Oh, okay. The Fox well, Chase, the Warminster, West Trenton, and so forth. All right. All right. This cabinet, we have the uh, Hiawatha. Which I think you remember this because you got to help me open it. Yeah, and I was extremely nervous even <laughs> helping, let alone handling it. Uh, <laughs> it's a beautiful set. It runs off the TMCC. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's amazing. And then uh, 392 Blue Comet being uh, 400 Blue Comet with the Blue Comet cars. And they're... Lionel from the 90s. Okay. And, uh, that's a set I wouldn't mind having myself, actually. That's great for Christmas. <laughs> and then behind, below are all post-war. And then some MPC Alcos and some post-war Alcos. Then you get into all the pre-war, my die cast down the bottom. Oh, okay. And that's why it's just piled in. <laughs> They're ones I got, and in time I'll restore a bunch of them. Um, i just been collecting them. I've been collecting them since I was a kid. You find one in a box for three to five bucks, and I would buy it. And uh, you, know, you never know what you would find in a box. A yeah, little 150 like this. Very odd today, but... There's no sense in me even restoring it. It's better off the way it is. It actually bring more in the long run. So I just put it in the case and leave it. There are some that will get paint because they have no paint on them at all. But, uh, that's that part of the collection. This is so cool. I, I especially love the standard gauge. Oh yeah, there's more up all up in here. This 318 that's up here, that was the one that Brian used to run in his store. And he ran it so much he burnt the wheels off of it from MTH. And it has our model engineering wheels on it now. Oh, okay. And uh, that's one of them I'll actually have around my Christmas tree this year. <laughs> nice. Then the Helga, an original Hellgate bridge, a set of 200 series trolleys. And, 
124 stations in two different colors. And uh, I have a lot of the old set boxes. In uh, most all of these, I have boxes for all this up here. It just it's part of the collection and so forth. And then I have my 200 series, the 10 series, the 500 series. Down below is the MTH uh, American Flyer cars. And then the very bottom are McCoy cars. Most of them are TCA cars that we give out. So what else we got here, Harry? Most of this is my pre-war with the exception of a couple of pieces that are uh, MPC. Like, that's MPC. These were MPC. But uh, the rest of it's all post-war. And auto racks and cranes. You know me and work cranes. Oh, yeah. I, I like my work trains. I like construction vehicles. I'm looking at those... Uh, cons the Alice Charmers. Yeah. Yeah, the Alice Charmers are neat. The yellow one is a common one. The This one here is an original. And uh, it's the uh, 6817. They were odd with the orange car on it. And then Lionel did a remake. That happens to be one of the remakes. That's the only other newer piece in there. And then down with the auto cars... There was the NASCAR. I see that one. Which I liked it because it fit with the old stuff when they redid them. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. And then this is the oddball coal car. It's a gloss Lehigh Valley. And they're really hard to find. It uh, just happened to... One time I forget where I got it, but I got it cheap. I wasn't even looking for it. It fell in my lap. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Yep. I mean, this uh, is... It was one of them I found out at York under a table and was missing its wheels. Yeah. So cool. Then in this case, we got the... That's a MTH385. And then I've got the number 9, which the box is up there for it. It, uh... More of my 64, 64 box cars and a bunch of my box cars and work train cars and cabooses. But uh, all ones I've collected. You know. Very nice. So it's all stuff for when the guys come to visit and then the roadside America whistles. Everybody's got to have a Roadside America whistle. There you go. Considering most, most of you know, me and Sean go back a little ways, and we're always busting each other's shoes. Now, his birthday was the other day. He was at the shop. Did not know it was his birthday. Um, was it was Sunday was your birthday. Correct. Correct. I have been having something that I had from a kid that I even bought with my own my money. You know, to show you that I do, and this is going to be hard to me admit that everybody that I don't like Conrail, but there was a one small time in my life that I liked Conrail. Really? Yes. And this is for you, bud. I found it out my mom's when I moved back home. This is a mug I probably bought back in the now, 70s. Now, you got to remember, I gave him a Redding mug when he was living here. <laughs> you know, so... This is something I actually drank out of. It's an old coffee cup. I bought it at the store when it was Henning Scale Models down on Main Street when I was a kid. I must have been uh, I remember 12, when we first got when these them. mugs first came out. Wow. All right, man. Happy birthday. I know you you use it with honor and dignity because you're the Conrail man. Thank you very you know, much. Bud. Yeah. Uh, it's very nice. You know, now you have... A Conroe coffee mug. Yep. Don't worry, he's got a Redding one that replaces <laughs> it that I gave him. So. And I know how hard it is for you to say Conroe sometimes. Yeah, so, yeah. Look at He said it in full sentence, though. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. uh, back in the day, they had mugs. I mean, I had that. I had a Redding one. I had a Northern Pacific. That's the only one that the handle didn't break off. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think I had a PRR. We think we had a PRR I got from my dad. My dad liked Pennsylvania. But 
Yeah, that's the only one that has survived because that was yeah. kind of pushing. And, and I just want to mention one other thing before you go away. This this goes to show that two people who are, are actually opposites can still get along with each other. Yep. They're not yeah. really opposites. Just because you, man, I, I, well, it's like you're an MTH guy okay. and I'm an RIL guy. That's just true. But we still get along. We're fine right. with it because yeah. I respect what you run. You respect what I run. I mean, I have, yeah, the day it's all trains, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I have Lionel, but I just MTH just right. made more ready. Yeah. And and, and correctly. Yeah. Correctly, I but understand. I just want to show everybody that uh, we just do it just to, just to bust each other's shoes. Right? Yeah, it's, it's all in fun and games. Yes. I mean, what do you call? You try to you do the little squirrel, a little poke and digs. Yeah. yeah, but it's all it's all nine times out of ten we're we're laughing when we're doing it. Yeah, because so. I think in the beginning people thought we were really serious. Yeah. Oh yeah, I had I had a few that came to me. Harry, you got a problem with your administrators? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I think we got it handled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, people, what do you call it? Take it with a grain of salt. It's just me and Sean busting each other's shoes. I mean, we get along. We're good friends. Yep. Always Absolutely. good to see each other. You know, it was kind of strange. You know, it goes back, I don't know, what, it was about 2017, 18? 2015. 15, we were, correct. Yep. Yeah. 15. I remember when I first came with my Conrail shirt and I was going uh, coming to the run for fun, and Walt well, here, he kept eyeing me up, and he's like, and I'm looking at him, I'm like, do I have mustard on my shirt? <laughs> and then finally he told me the story that, you know, he, he liked writing as a kid, and he was a little upset that went away when Conrad took over. Yeah, so I do remember that story he told me. Yeah, it's like, what do you call, that's what I grew up, very, what do you call? Well, it was also right across the street from the shop as yeah, well. Yeah, and we, we grew up, we grew all up on the, me and Harry grew up on the Bethlehem branch. You know, we'd be wherever we might be at our houses in town, we could hear the ore trains coming from Quaker Town, and then once they got through the Percocy Tunnels, you could hear them because it was like great across the, and the horn, so we knew wherever we were, we were pedaling, we'd be watching the train come. You know what's funny is you sit out here on the porch, you still hear the trains all the way from Lansdale. Really? You have come, you have coming yeah. up to what do you Because call? we're on this side of the tunnel. Oh, okay. Uh, you'll hear them, you, you'll hear the septas and the Doyle sign line. Yep. Right? You'll, you'll, you'll hear uh, Pennsylvania Northeastern coming up. I hear that all the time. I know exactly which horn it is. <laughs> you know. all right. but, but yeah, we used to used to chase like we'd be wherever our house, or whatever. We'd hear that man. We'd be pedaling our bikes down to the train tracks. <laughs> cool story though. You know. So. But I uh, thank Walt very much for this. You know, so <laughs> they can smile. They sort of wake you up and keep you going. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but happy birthday, and I hope you enjoy, it, man. Thanks much. You know. <laughs> Yeah. That's what we're here for. Is we're here to yeah. teach people. Yeah, I mean it's it's, it's fun. I mean it it stinks that COVID came along and and screwed a lot of things up on our part of the the mojo we had with the club and everything going. I mean we were we were rolling on that, and then all of a sudden like the brakes went on. Like, I got like, sick. Like, and yeah, Harry, I, didn't I mean, help. yeah, Harry got sick. I mean, even with Harry being sick, he was what do you call? But just just the club and everything we were doing. The, when I got sick, I got cranky though yeah, because yeah. of the medication. <laughs> you know, and, and yes, he could be very. He's been very cranky, but not now. Now um, I'm pretty good. So it's like you know, we just wish like like everybody else to get back to where normal, it was, back yeah. to normal. You know, mm -hmm. and it's like because I mean, even with the club and the shows and everything, and, and it was just you know that, that COVID. I mean, whatever everybody knows that. Yeah. that that's for me getting back to normal. <laughs> you know? Uh, and, you know, it's always great seeing you. I mean, I hope everybody got a little bit more little gist tonight of the layout and which some of the things represent. Um, and I did some. I'm going to be posting some of my own videos of me running my train through the towns and everything with the lights out, um, doing some night night video. And um, but yeah, you you you. I hope you understand a little bit more about like especially Lyondale and what that kind of represents and what we're trying to replicate. Eventually, we'll get a lot more of the buildings to really replicate what that was it's at some point in time. Um, you know, a lot of it where the buildings came and what things and what parts are the older parts of the layout. You know, there's only a few spots that are really the original, original, and they're going to get changed. Soon Actually, too. there ain't much of the original layout. Well, I think, I, like I was saying, to Sean, the one big mountain is about really one of the few. No, that was changed when I redid the corners. 
slight thing there, did you, Joey? I thought that yeah, was I tore that whole thing out. I got video of me tearing yeah. that whole mountain. <laughs> so what is it? That thing over there is probably the most... The famous? oldest thing is the bookshelf. <laughs> and that was done by my brother. Yeah. Bill did the bookshelf. You want to pan over there. That bookshelf was done by Bill. Okay. Where the two tunnel portals are. Okay. So that's, so that's probably that's the that's oldest. the oldest section of the layout that hasn't been touched. Wow, and probably won't. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so so, so most, I guess yeah, most everything in here is really not original, yeah. or been altered in some form or fashion. All right, so I would like to thank Walt and Harry Henning the third. Guys. For the uh, the actual invitation and tour of the old train farm. I'm having a whistle to pull today. <laughs> well, that's train shop. And, right. And I've, I was just getting ready to say, make sure you check them out on the train shop weekly. They have a great YouTube video. They shoot from uh, the store, showing you guys what's new and coming uh, through the store. Like I say, don't forget to hit the like button when you watch Sean's video. And then subscribe. Uh, uh, I subscribe to his videos. And we're sorry sometimes we don't do it every week because this it, it's it's hectic holiday. It's it's hectic at the store. I mean long hours. You know, by Friday comes around, you got three twelve-hour days that were open, and even the other days that are the normal kind of extra. It's just. Or we're working um, seven days, days a, week, a week, too. Yeah, so, but be looking forward, uh, okay. I mean, if you get it out this week, we'll be looking forward to Train Shop Week. We got a bunch of stuff that came in. Um, oh, yeah, a lot. a lot of things. Everybody's going to be all excited, the one thing that came in, so we're going to probably do a review on that, so. Mm -hmm. You guys put on a great show, too, I got to tell you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. We appreciate it. You know, I get comments. We got to beat on each other. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's kind of neat to answer on the phone and people like from all over all over the country and say, "Is this this Walt?" I'm like, "Yeah, it is." <laughs> but I mean, we have pretty much a lot of good thing. I mean, and we get phone calls from all over the place. So, oh, well, that's uh, great. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. You know, so. And then the the, the uh, couple of gifts and stuff that have been sent are like really thank everybody that mm -hmm. sent gifts like you got yours this week mm -hmm. yeah yes. Harold yeah Harold and the cars like and uh, that was nice we get guys that have sent me hats and you know cards and stuff like that through the last couple of years and yeah, so and forth. then there's a guy out in Ohio who does the buildings and there's some of them are on Anthony even, Anthony man you guys yeah, they are pretty good cool looking buildings you yeah. know you know, probably get them pretty, pretty kind of, and money's going to proceed him, so you can help him out. That will keep building, building, building. He's kind of like, kind of almost sort of like a little Harry. So yeah, make sure you check out the Train Shop Weekly. I'm going to put a link to that in the description of this video, so you don't miss it. Because uh, you don't want to miss anything new coming to the store. You might f find something you want to buy. Hey, hey I tell you this yeah, much, and some things go. Rather quickly here. There you go. Time good for night. good night. Good night. Time for good night. Good night, everybody.